Let's talk about chocolate next. Mmm, that's good. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Jeff. Glad to have you here. Excuse me as I'm munching down here on some chocolate. Um, so, Lucky Bot sent me a, um, a chocolate extruder to try out, and it's kind of a tale of two printers, and I'm going to explain why as I go through this video here. But, um, yeah, um, I was really interested to give this a shot. It's um, hooked up right here to the Vox Lab, um, and I've been running some tests, so this is kind of a a preliminary video, so to speak. It's not like a full, full after I've gotten my feet completely wet and stuff. Like I've been playing around with it for a little bit. I'm starting to get it dialed in, but I thought I would um, share my thoughts with you. Okay, so here we go. So LuckyBot sent me the uh, LuckyBot Food 3D Printer Extruder, and I'm gonna have a look at that now. I can get through all this. Ah. So it did make it here, by the way, pretty good, except for there is one um, thing on the corner. Hopefully it didn't affect anything inside. Oh, packing material. Sorry, I thought I might have my address on it. Lucky Bot standard AC 12 volt 36 extension plate and tubes. Okay, cool. Quality inspection. Look at that. Give me. I got two packs of eight tubes. So, well, two packs of four, so eight tubes. A mounting bracket. Oh, box looks a little bit damaged, but I think it will be salvage. Well, let's have a look. Oh, so it's a typical mounting bracket. It should fit basically on any actual, any 3D printer really that comes with a hardware kit too. That's good. Power adapter and the Lucky Bot unit itself. Ooh, it's heavy actually. That's interesting. So there's my Lucky Bot. There's my serial number. I gotta say the um, packaging on this is pretty heavy. It's pretty decent. Let's open this bad boy up. No, oh, here's your instructions. Perfect. Um, oh, baking paper. Okay, so silica paper. Peel out, I don't think. All right. Um, let's see here. Can we get this stuff apart here? Well, it's packaged very good. So for shipping, they did awesome, right? Um, that accessory box. I want to see what's in that. And there is the Lucky Bot extruder itself. Oh yeah, okay, so it's basically a um, the motor, I'm assuming, um, and the stepper pushes it in, extrudes the chocolate down below, and we build. Um, it goes up to 40C, I think. It's in this little accessory box here. Oh, so we got our harness, our wires, um, our adapter cable. All the bells and whistles. So I have to tell you, I was extremely excited to start uh, modding my Troxy to put this on. So I went through all the steps. I took it off. I put the... Uh, their carriage on the back. I actually even modeled a few parts to this. So uh, I modeled a um, sensor mount for the original sensor to put on the side, as you can see in the corner there. I also um, created a new end stop because it didn't quite hit the end stop for the trunks. Now my AC adapter, I'll show you a picture of it. When I got it, it actually had a little bit of solder on the ground here. Um, I did clean it up, it now plugs in no problem, but I was having a hard time plugging it in. So just be aware, check that out. I don't know if that's a quality control issue or just one random one off. So one thing I did find out with the Lucky Bot is you have to go to their website um, to get some instructional videos and whatnot. But I found out that if I typed in my serial number from the Lucky Bot, I got the wrong serial number error. Uh, as you can see here, it's the same, but if I type the one in from um, their PDF on how to get onto the site, I can get in no problem. So I thought that was interesting. And I'm sure if I actually called customer service and asked them to register my Lucky Bot, then it wouldn't be a problem. But just so you know, um, 
if yours isn't working, try that workaround. It might work for you. Uh, on the Lucky Bot website, it's pretty informative. It comes with uh, you got your operational videos, unpacking, filling chocolate, installation guide for various different printer styles, um, how to use the TRM, or which is the uh, wheel backplate mount that I used. Um, oh, sorry. Um, the WL wheel is the wheel backplate mount. The TRM is a little dongle that you plug into your thermostat in order for it to fool the lucky bot or your printer into thinking it's at 190, so it will extrude. Um, and again, platform leveling, preheating, how to download um, printing, cure installation, etc. cetera. Um, they also have a, an area with their pre-sliced and um, SDL files for a lot of their models, which is quite nice to hopefully get you up and running right away. Um, there's a 3D text file, which is basically like Tinkercad that you can make your own sayings. Right. And that's kind of cool too. A 3D picture is basically um, like a lithophane. I'm not gonna show you that because I never played around with it. So, so working on the Lucky Bot, I've got two tubes of chocolate I'm melting currently. This is gonna be my first test. Um, so yeah, trying to uh, dial in for my first test of a maple leaf. Uh, so I have the baby setting, so I'm just trying to figure it out. I have a little froggy ice pack back there to um, try and keep the bed a little bit cooler. Um, I don't know if it's going to make a difference or not. I don't have AC. So I was playing around with the Tronxy for quite a while, um, over probably a week, week and a half, 10 days or so, trying to get it um, consistently printing. But I think part of the problem with the Tronxy is the fact of the touch screen with the baby stepping up and down as well as the extruder uh, micro stepping up and down in order to start your prints properly. I was just having a really hard time with that. So I um, decided to abandon my Tronxy project. I'll get back to it. I'll go back. But I wanted to abandon it. And then I started with the Vox Lab Aquila because on their website they have it. So I figured if they've used it and it's worked, I'm going to give it a shot. Followed their instructional video, hooked up. I didn't hook it up the way they had it. I just had it on the bracket still. So I just used that as opposed to taking apart my hot end to do this. I figured it was just easier. But there was one part here where it says to hook it up to the stepper motor to the wire. I never got a piece like that. I don't know if that's possible or not. So um, what I did was I just uh, hooked up the 10-pin uh, cable directly to my motherboard. And that worked for me because I had to put the... Uh, the, uh, the dongle in. I had to unplug my extruder motor and then plug in the one from the Lucky Bot because uh, it said that they had a part that didn't quite come with it. And your TMP uh, goes into where your thermostat is, which is right there. And that's the only mods you need inside the case is that and that and sorry, that and that and that's it. So, as you can see, I switched to the Vox Lab. I'm running Alex's firmware, and I'm getting a lot further than I did with the Tronxy. So, maybe just the way Tronxy handles the G code or the extruder or whatever, it seems to be a little bit different than what you're expecting, but um, here's to hoping for success. So I am definitely getting closer and getting higher up and stuff. I still managed to have a few air bubbles. Um, really need to work on that. But yes, I can see potential in this machine, um, or at least this extruder. But your chocolate preparation is the key. You need to thoroughly make sure your chocolate has no air in it. I'm not quite sure how to do that, but, you know, I'm going to do my best. But as I say, I'm getting closer. One thing I did do, though, is put all a few um, tubes of chocolate into a filament dehydrator, running it a little bit higher than the, uh, the Lucky Watt extruder, uh, and that seemed to help quite a bit. It kept the chocolate ready to use, and it also allowed the air to come to the top. 
So after dialing this in a little bit, as I say, I had a few prints. Um, we'll look at the Maple Leaf, for instance. This is kind of the first one, and I used their G-code for. And I'll take photos of all these in a minute, of course. Um, this is my second one. And it was almost, almost perfect. And this was also um, using their sliced G-code. So then I decided I would slice it in the, uh, the slicer. Oh, and they're starting to melt on the plate. Oh dear, it's really warm here today. So, um, but this is after I sliced it in the slicer. It's absolutely perfect. Um, so then I decided to try a guitar. Worked out quite well. And that crazy cat thing. Worked out fairly good too. Um, I, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I tried to do just 3D, but I did it too small. So everything's sort of interlaid, but it does... Bottom line is, as I got, it's going to be my dinner today, <laughs> is um, it does what it's supposed to do, right? It extrudes chocolate at a predetermined amount, and um, it's up to the chocolate, it's up to your room temperature. Remember when you first started printing and your benchies didn't come out right, and your cubes didn't come out right, and your bed wasn't quite level, and then as you went on you learnt the nuances of how to print well that's basically my experience with the lucky bot up to now is as i'm having it more and more i'm getting better at it i'm learning the nuances how to um prepare my chocolate properly uh, a big thing is you can't have air in your chocolate um if you have any air bubbles or whatnot just like on a printer you'll get some under extrusion or you'll get like you know um yeah, some gaps in your print. Um, so, you know, you're balancing the type of chocolate you're using compared to um, the temperature for it, the speed of the print, um, how the model is. I haven't done anything tall as of yet, but uh, let, let me walk before I can run, so to speak. But yeah, um, the Lucky Bot, as I said, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, is there a learning curve? Yes, there's definitely a learning curve on this. Um, you take it slow but steady, start with the little things like the leafs and the cat and the guitar and stuff like that, and we're gonna work our way up to like taller items like an Easter bunny or um, you know, a rocket ship or something. Um, who, what is this Lucky Bot extruder meant for? Um, if you're a foodie, you know what? This will be really good for you. Um, if you're a baker and you do um, cakes and stuff like that where you want to add a little bit to design, I think that would be awesome. Small restaurants or something where you can do some branding and maybe do your logo or something and then place it on your desserts or your trays or whatever. I think um, that's where the Lucky Bot will make its money and where, like, th that's its clientele, so to speak. Is it for everyday, regular printer users? That's up to you, right? Um, I'm gonna, I have a few printers, so I'm gonna leave this attached to my Vox Lab for now, and I'm going to uh, continue playing around with it and get larger and greater prints. Um, but as I said, it is a bit of a learning curve, so just be warned. Um, it's a good quality product. It does exactly what it's meant to do it extrudes chocolate um i haven't tried it with other items yet would i buy this yeah 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 if i had if i was a uh, as i say if i was a foodie if i was a baker if i had my own small business if i was looking for a little bit of bling um you know, next time we have guests over or whatnot and i'm making a dessert or something i might run off a few cool little items off of the lucky bot and sort of decorate the plates with you know a bit of a conversation piece, so to speak. So, um, yeah, that's my review of the Lucky Bot. Um, it's quite reasonable um, for what it does. It's a good add-on to a printer. Um, understand that you're going to take away a your printer's functionality while you're using it, but it is a relatively easy um, exchange. As I say, you would just loosen this, and then you would tighten your your regular hot end back on. And that would basically be it as far as the way I thought about it was. 
So, um, yeah, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. You got any questions, leave them down below. If you're cruising through the channel, it's your first time, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, help my channel to grow. And until next time, I'm going to have some chocolate. See you guys.